Good morning, Coach. Thanks for taking the time. Hey, good um, morning. We'll started with Ruben Frank and then John McMullen. Good morning, Dave. Thanks for doing this. Special teams, so much of special teams is guys who show in preseason games that they really want to be a part of it, that they're committed to it. How do you replicate that, kind of learning that about them without the preseason games? Yeah, I would say that's definitely a challenge. Um, those preseason games have been great for us in the past. Uh, you know, there's a handful of things that are good. One good thing is that everybody's under the same restrictions, so nobody has those. Um, and then uh, Coach Peterson also has done an outstanding job of really setting up the practice schedule and the structure so we can get a lot of competitive drills in there. Um, we try to make it as game-like as possible. Obviously, we're not going to get uh, you know, it to be exactly like a game, but we try to set up drills in the best way we can where it's competitive, um, but maybe there's not 11 guys on the field. Maybe there's eight or something like that, or there's four instead of... 11 but uh and we can kind of we can take some of the space out of the drills and some stuff like that so we're working hard to make it as competitive as possible and simulate game-like conditions without actually having those games go ahead john mcmullen and then bo wolf hey dave uh i thought it was interesting last time we got to talk to you uh nobody brought up the specialist uh, what what kind of luxury is it to have guys that are so entrenched that you're not really that worried about it. Yeah, no, it's great to have uh, those three guys here. And I would say the best thing about all three of them is just how much they love their craft. They're really serious about what they do. Um, they had a terrific offseason. Those guys got together all the time and uh, kicked and punted and even with the snap and all that stuff. So I would say those guys came into training camp here in great shape and in great form, really. Um, so it's definitely nice having veteran players there, um, especially this year, obviously. Um, but just like anybody, those guys are still working hard to continue to improve, and there's areas in their game where they can work on. Um, but like I say, the best part about them is just how serious they are about it, so they really do all that stuff on their own. You don't have to worry about them nearly as much. Bo and then Les. Hey, Dave. Um, we've seen Jalen Rager, you know, do a lot of punt return stuff, and he's sort of bobbled a few catches. Is that something you're worried about at all? Yeah, no, I'm not worried with him. Uh, we're really excited about him. He's going to have some ups and downs, just like any young player is in this league. Um, but right now, he's doing a great job. He's getting settled in back there, feel really good about him. Um, he's really an explosive player, so we're, we're highly encouraged. Les and then Chris Franklin. Hey, Dave. Uh, on that topic, you've used several guys uh, returning so far. Um, how do you winnow that field without the games? You know, what will you be looking at to, to yeah, figure out who's your guy? Is it like if Rieger has a big role in the offense, then maybe he doesn't get to return? Or how do you – what are you looking at here? Yeah, I would say probably all of the above. I mean um... – I mean, first part of it is kind of just the roster makeup in general. Uh, you know, obviously we have limitations on the number of players on the active roster, the number of players active on game day. Um, so a guy's got to fit into the roster high enough that he's going to be around on game day. Um, if he's an exceptional returner, then I think, you know, maybe he would be there for his return skills only. But I would say most of the time it's a combination of either offense and defensive play as well as, you know, return skills. Um, but uh, so I would say there's a lot of variables to that. Um, it is definitely without the preseason games, that was always a nice opportunity to get some players who might have been further down the roster an opportunity just to return. If he was maybe just a returner only and exceptional in that area, he might have gotten a chance to prove himself. Um, so, you know, it's just something we got to work through. But, you know, the other challenge you have is for us right now, you only have so many punts coming off the punter's foot. And you can take a jugs machine and try to simulate it the best you can, but it's really not perfect. Um, and then you got to prioritize who, who's going to get those reps off the punter's foot. Um, we've tried to pare that down. Obviously, Jalen's got a bunch of that work. Greg Ward's got some of that stuff. Uh, Deshaun Jackson's got a little bit of it. Um, there, but yeah, I would say you know it's it's difficult to evaluate every player. The one thing Coach Peterson does do a good job of is he has a specialist period before practice starts. So 
we do get a chance to shoot the jugs to a lot of different guys back there, and those guys get an opportunity to work their return game um, in that. And then they also get a chance in practice to work on holding up guys or rushing punts and doing the other 10 jobs on the field other than the returner. Thanks. Go ahead, Chris, and then Ed Kratz. Hey, Dave. Uh, when it comes to the punt coverage and the kickoff coverage teams, have there been any, any of the new guys really stood out so far in training camp? Yeah, I, w I would say, I mean, any guy in particular, it's hard for me to name in particulars, but I would tell you this, that I'm really excited about this young group of players. We've had a bunch of guys come in here. They're all really competitive. And uh, our, our young group of players, I feel like, is really pushing the top group, and it's really making us better collectively. Uh, in my time here, I would say our best units have always been when – when that bottom group has really driven and pushed the top group and those guys compete and make each other better. And the other thing about that is like half the time in those seasons, at the beginning of the year, some of those guys aren't on the roster, but by the end of the year, some of those guys who were pushing the top end up coming up because of injuries and you know things that happen throughout the course of the year, and then they end up playing for us. So I'm excited about the group overall. Go ahead, Ed, and then Paul Domwich. Yeah, hi, hi, Dave. Sorry about the delay there. Um, I just there was such a big emphasis in the off season of getting faster um, and speedier. I mean, have you noticed that? Has that manifested itself on the field uh, yeah, that you've absolutely. seen so far? Yeah, I, I would say definitely. Um, we definitely look faster out there. We got a lot of speed. Um, you need speed and good football players, but uh, but we got a we got a bunch of guys that can do both of that. We're really excited about it. Um, you see it on the practice field. It's been encouraging. And, and the other thing along those lines, so many of our plays on special teams are just wide wide area plays. I mean, they're long field plays where there's 20, 30 yard zones where you're not even being touched. For example, on kickoff, I mean, you run 30 yards before anyone's even by you. So. Um, these guys on special teams plays end up getting getting to a top speed more often probably than you would on any offense or defensive play. And uh, I would say it definitely shown up for us. Thank you. Paul and then Dave. Dave, in preparation for potential worst case scenarios with regard to COVID going down into the line here, have you had to change your approach at all? Have you had to expand the reps to guys that you might not ordinarily give reps to in case you need them uh, down the line. I mean, has anything changed for you in that respect? Yeah, uh, not a ton because you're kind of preparing for a lot of this stuff on any given year. You know, who's the backup snapper? Um, who's going to be the third one after that? Um, but we have given some of those guys a few more reps than we normally would. Um, and then I would say the other thing that we're starting to do is shift guys around positionally. So, for example, on kickoff return, maybe a guy was playing a front line position. And then recently we moved him to like a back end position. And some of it's just contingency planning or preparing them for an emergency in the course of the year. Um, so we're trying to get some of that stuff on our belt now. So if we have to make a change in the middle of the season, that uh, it's not the first time a guy's ever played that position back there. But uh, it's definitely difficult. I mean, you only have so many reps and, and so much time to get it all done. And you're trying to figure out a lot of things right now. But yeah, we're going through that also. <laughs> Go ahead, Dave, and then Zach. Hey, Dave, good morning. Um, Davion Taylor obviously drafted in, in large part for his athleticism and speed. How much has that shown up so far uh, on teams this year? Yeah, no, you, you can see him run. I mean, especially in a straight line, if he's chasing somebody, I mean, he closes the field really fast. Um, and he's a great guy. He's working really hard. He, it's The game's important to him. He puts a lot of time into it. He wants to be a really good player. He's like a lot of these guys. I mean, he has a lot to learn, you know, especially in our world on special teams. He hasn't played quite as much of that stuff in his past. Obviously, you guys all know his history in the game anyway. Um, but he's he's an exciting player. I think his upside and future is really bright. we got time for a couple more, so we'll, we'll do Zach, Bo, and then Paul. Hey, good morning, Dave. Uh, Nate Gary has, has been a core special teams guy for you the past few years, took the most snaps of any player last year. In practice, he's he's been an every-down linebacker. Are you still anticipating him being a part of your group? 
Yeah, no, good question. I thought you were going to tell me in practice he hasn't taken that many reps on special teams <laughs> because he hasn't. Uh, <laughs> because right now he has taken a lot more reps on uh, defense. Um, that being said, obviously, also you mentioned the fact that he's got a lot of experience for us. So, I mean, he's a guy for us that we could put into a bunch of different spots at any time. He's also a really good long snapper for us. So we practice him a little bit more in that area. So that's been good for him. Um, but yeah, we'll just kind of see how it plays out on defense. I mean, that's kind of everybody's position this time of year. You know, you're in my in my shoes. You're kind of waiting for the top end of the thing to to sort itself out, and then as that sorts itself out, you can kind of make a little bit more sense of exactly you know the pieces that we're going to get to work with a little bit more. Um, and like I've always told you, I mean, we're always trying to balance a guy's his, a guy's load on game day. You know, if he's playing a lot of defense, maybe he can't play quite as much on teams or vice versa. Um, so we'll just see how that all shakes out. We try to we try to kind of get everybody in position. So when the top falls, then our stuff falls in line too. All right, Bo, and then Paul. Just curious about how much you like grind the tape on these special teams, like snaps of these rookies from when they were in college, and how much you, uh, you know, you you balance that versus what you see from them in practice. Like you know, a guy like Dante Olson, who was a very good special teams player in college. Yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, it's interesting you say that. I mean, we watch everything going in um, or before we get them, and then there's even times where you go back and you say, hey, you know, like now that we've seen them, this is kind of what we're thinking. But let me double check that with his college film and see, you know, uh, does that show up in his college film too? Did I see that the first time right? Uh, and you kind of double check with games, especially because, like you guys are all saying, we don't have those preseason games. So, you know, maybe in a normal year you go off more of, you know, I know I've seen them with us under what we're asking them to do. I would say maybe for me this year, maybe going back a little bit more to that college stuff where he's actually playing a game to kind of double check the things I'm seeing on the practice field and does that match up with what he's done in the past. Um, now, that being said, you're also trying to give these guys kind of a clean slate, you know, so you want to – bring a guy in here, teach him what you're teaching him, and ask him to do it how you want him to do it and not hold what he did in college against him necessarily. Um, so it's a, I would say it's a balance of both. Um, but I, I would definitely tell you that I've looked back at the college film more this year than normal. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, Dave, I just wanted to ask you about having sprawls around and the how helpful that is with the respect to training rigor to, to handle that job. Yeah, I would say what's Darren here is great. I mean, obviously you guys all know my relationship with Darren. I love him. Um, he's obviously, he was an unbelievable player, but he's really just an unbelievable resource um, for this whole organization. I mean, the guy played back there for a long, long time. He's got a lot of experience, obviously. Him talking to Jalen really is I mean, it means a lot more than me talking to him um, because of all his experience and all that stuff. So um, not to mention, I'm sure Jalen's got a healthy amount of respect for, you know, obviously what the guy accomplished in this league. Um, but Darren's just such a great guy and a, and a great resource. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm thrilled to have him around. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you, guys.